Hi everyone, it's Molten Girl, otherwise known as Pamela Radwin. I'm not showing my face because it's Sunday and I didn't put any makeup on and I just don't want to scare everybody. A lot of requests have been made. If I could film a video to show how I achieve certain effects like these pieces here. Hopefully you can see that. Sorry about the reflection. There's this one. There's also this one here. Those are both done on pieces of uh, wood. And there's also this tiny mini here. He's fun to do. I do a lot of practice ones to see if I'm happy with them before moving on to a larger scale. I find that it um, gives me the results I want fairly quickly and I know the colors I will be using will work rather than wasting a bunch of paint. I will be using um, the Australian Floetrol. I find that I caved and ordered it because in the long run, experimentation and playing scientist um, is a full-time job in itself and I just want to make art. So I find that this in combination with um, either the Amsterdam Titanium White or the Windsor & Newton um, White works really well. So I use 20 ml of the Floetrol to at least 5 ml or a teaspoon of the uh, uh, titanium white. It can either be Amsterdam or it can be this one. It could be any titanium white that you have. Um, it doesn't have to be a specific brand. I don't have any affiliations or sponsorships with anybody. So I'm not promoting any one brand over the other. Um, for my pouring medium, being in Canada, I have access to this Valspar one. It's a base four. Um, it's a little milky inconsistency, but you know what? It works and it gives the results. It gives the cells paired together with the Aussie Floetrol. I've also gotten good results using this um, Bear product, Deep Base 8753. Uh, that mixed together with the Josania Gloss Varnish. I use a two to one ratio. Everyone knows this product probably by now. So that mixed together in a two to one ratio yields really nice results. Uh, for my pillow, being in Canada, I don't have access to the Valspar Silk or several of the other ones that people recommend, but I do use the Glidden Semi Gloss. I find it works really nicely. It's thick enough. But what's most important, as opposed to it being thick or thin, is it's stretchy. And it really allows my paints to stretch nicely without losing the cells. And I think that's the important part. You don't want to lose your cells once you put them down or you achieve them. You don't want to lose that effect. And I just want to say that I know um, there has been a lot of uh, talk about this color place paint from Walmart uh, being in the US, if you're there, uh, it's a cheap paint, that's for sure. Um, does it stretch well and give you the results you want? Yes. Do your pieces look phenomenal once you pour them? Absolutely. But the next day or the day after the next, um, you will develop these white dots um, on your paintings. Um, some people call them or refer to them as measles. I've gotten them only when I use the color place paint uh, that's been recommended on a few groups and I don't use it because of that. I want nice clean results, nice clean work and this piece um, has been resined. It needs another coat because there's an edge there that I have to redo and it's just gotten one coat. But the main result is the dry result because that's what you're going to end up with. So I find that if you um, pour your paintings, this one isn't resined, but when you pour your paintings, they look phenomenal wet because they're all glossy and shiny. Everything looks great. But what do they look like once they dry? And that's important 
because that's what you're going to be adding resin to. And if there's any white dots or if there are any flaws or whatnot that come through the pillow, you will notice it on the dried pieces. So just a warning that test something first before you create a bigger piece because um, I find there's a few people in various art groups that post their work that's wet and glossy and I never see their work once it's dry and I don't know. I have nothing to hide. I probably poured over. Actually, I do have one piece that I used the color place with. Hang on. It's this one here. And um, there are, there's some reflection, but there are some white bits um, in and around here that have developed as a result of the drying process. So I don't use that paint anymore for that reason. So with that said, again, I'm not sponsored. I'm just doing it for the love of it. I'm an artist who I do teach classes and I love to share. I love to just share the knowledge I have so that you know that you, you get the results I do and you're happy with what you are creating. Um, you know, if you're threatened to share your technique, fluid art is very, very difficult to replicate. And I find that if you're threatened to share your technique or your style or you're hiding something, then that's just plain dishonest. And you know, you're not really secure in who you are if you have to resort to behavior like that. So I have nothing to hide. Um, I'm gonna share with you today what I do and what works for me. Um, I've shared the uh, bases, the pillow, um, pouring medium, I should say, the cell activator. I love these PBO iridescent metallics. I use a lot of those. I use Amsterdam. I use Pearl X uh, uh, pigments. This, um, the Reflex Violet is really, really pretty, mixed with certain things. Um, and uh, the only fan I'm not a, uh, I'm not a fan of the Liquitex acrylics. I don't know why. I just don't like them, but I like Windsor & Newton. Golden acrylics are beautiful, the heavy-bodied ones. Um, Amsterdam, uh, PBO, Deco Art is really nice as well, and I get good results from that. Anyhow, so without further ado, let me start pouring my white, and hopefully coming up with something that resembles a decent painting so that this isn't all a waste. I have wax paper. I never use wax paper, but today, for some reason, I'm using wax paper. Anyhow, so I have this five inch wooden round that I've taped on the back, and um, it's just from Michaels. It's very, very, it's, it's not expensive, but they're fun to paint on, and they're fun to later put into a little stand or a holder, and you have a little piece of art. So I'm going to pour this Glidden Semi-Gloss. Sorry, that's my dog. I'm gonna pour this Glidden Semi-Gloss on top of my wooden round. Just a little bit here. Slowly, just covering the edges. Sorry guys, I have my door closed, but my dogs bark. That's what they do. And let me just see if I have enough paint here. Yes, I do. I believe I do. I don't know why it's dripping from the bottom, but it is. I have no idea why. And I'm just going to make sure that this goes over this. It's like dressing a cake, right? Or icing a cake, rather. It's kind of cool. While I'm doing this, I just want to give a huge shout out to my wing woman, Tanya, from Under the Oak Artistry on Instagram. She has become an amazing friend. We connected um, through this technique and um, we've supported one another. And she listens to me complain and um, I tend to overanalyze things a lot. So she keeps me grounded. I'm going to use only three colors today. And you're gonna say, what, three colors? Three colors only. 
and let's keep things simple. But to get a piece similar to, to this one, and I do have a round that I didn't bring with me, but anyhow. Similar to this one, three colors, beautiful effects. Let's keep it simple. So I'm using this rich gold. Um, putting that down first. It's probably the color that will dominate the most, but it's, it is beautiful. So the next color is going to be the Reflex Violet um, by Pearl X Chicard, mixed with Dioxazine Purple. This is something that um, my friend Claire from Trippy Acrylics, Trippy Acrylics, um, suggested that I try. Is mixing a bit of dioxazine purple together with your uh, with your powdered pigments. It's really pretty. I have two of the mixed. One is slightly dark. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I'll use this one. I thought it was slightly darker, but it's not. Maybe it is. Oh, maybe I'll use the darker one. I don't know. Okay, bear with me, guys, here. So I'm going to put a little bit on. This dioxazine purple or any sort of dark... Well, dioxazine purple, really, is very pigmented. It is a very dense paint, and a little goes a long way. So you don't need a lot of it, because um, it'll take over the entire painting, so to speak. The next... Um, the last, rather, paint I'm going to use is this beautiful uh, PBO um, Green Blue. It's called Iridescent Green Blue, number 358. Really pretty. I think I use it in the majority of my pieces. They also have this lime green or this iridescent green yellow. Really pretty, too. Beautiful effects. I use that one in... Let me grab this piece again. In this piece here. And it's just, it's beautiful. Sorry about the lighting again, guys. I did film a video earlier that got cut off, like I said, so I lost the daylight. So I'm filming under my studio lights here. Okay, so I'm going to add this uh, green-blue iridescent from PBL. Really, really pretty. You don't need a lot of it either. But you want enough of it that mm, gives you that like it gives you that lightning bolt effect, right? But you don't need a lot of it. You don't want it to take over necessarily. I think that's good. I'm gonna mix this around just or swirl it rather around. And people like Jen Neal of Resin Inspired and others i love i love jen because she's so into sharing and she doesn't expect anything from people you know and her attitude is probably why i love her so much because she's just very genuine and nothing to hide just honest forthright uh, straight shooter i like that very confident in who she is as a person as an artist and it shows with her channel Rinska Duna from the Netherlands, who does the Dutch pours. Another infectious artist that you just can't help but watch because she's so positive. Love people like that, who, who are in it just for the sheer love of it. There are artists in it. Um, you can make a career out of it, but again, it's like anything. If your heart isn't into it or you're just in it for the money, your subscribers and your fans and your audience is going to know. So... So I'm going to add, I get this cell activator of stir. It's the Windsor Newton White with the Australian Floetrol. I'm just going to lay it down here on the top of my green. And that's it. That's it. No more. Probably I added too much, but it is what it is now. Okay. So with that, I'm going to gently blow on it. going to move it ever so slightly and blow again 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 and around and around 
That's that. Now, what I do after I blow this out, looks like a flower. It's really pretty. And this is the tedious, time-consuming part. I let the paints sort of stretch back into themselves. They have a bounce, so the cell activator has spread out, but I'm waiting for that to come back. And like I said, it's a little boring right at this point, but I want you guys to see that if I walked away right now, that white section that you look at would become a very thin line. The wooden rounds are kind of fun because they're easier to manipulate than a square canvas or a square um, wooden panel. You can kind of swirl them and make it more even. And then uh, get the cells. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see. I'm hoping you guys can see what I'm doing. Stretching the cells to get the cells here. And again, at this point, it's a, it's a lottery as to whether this is going to be a winner at the end or not. I never know until I'm finished um, tilting it and stretching it. So right now it's looking promising that's the thing it looks promising but what the end result will be is anyone's guess again it's patience which I'm not a very patient person I'm an Aries so you can imagine how patient I am but you have to be patient with this technique because if you rush it you will just end up with a mess I used to work, and I still do, with glass. I do lamp work beads, and um, when I encase my glass beads, uh, it's, a, it's a process, again, it's an exercise in, for, in, in patience, because if you melt your glass um, too quickly, you will ruin the design underneath, um, so that you have to be very careful and take your time uh, melting the clear glass on top of your design otherwise everything gets ruined same thing here if you rush and you tilt too quickly you will end up with a mess and so you don't want that so as you can see like the three colors I added I mean it gives the three colors are still there, but it gives different colors as well. So my point, I guess, in this whole thing is you don't need a lot of colors. You don't need 50 colors added to your painting um, to give you some really cool effects. You don't have to rush out to the store and buy the entire, I don't know, 100 set uh, tube acrylic paint set or whatever you know, to get the effects here. You need a few, you need a few good colors and then you're, you're, you're good to go. So we're gonna stretch this out a little bit again. Sorry guys, this is kind of boring probably, but I want you to see, and I don't wanna edit this to the point where you guys won't see what goes on behind the scenes because that bothers me too. You want to know how to get the effect. Now, some people like the negative space. No, oh my God. My husband does not. He says if he wants to buy a blank canvas or a blank or a white piece of art, he, you know, he can do that himself. So everyone has their own likes and dislikes. I do like a lot of, like, I do like the negative space when I do my Dutch pours. I think it's really, really pretty. Um, I'm trying to get you guys to see. Hopefully I'm in the camera. I can't see. I'm trying to concentrate on this so I don't muck it up. It's like I said, some people like the negative space. Uh, it's up to you. 
that's the beauty of art is in the interpretation. I mean, there are so many different ways to interpret art and that's why there are so many artists out there doing what they do because everyone is different and you will look at a piece and see it differently than myself. So I love that. I do love that about art. And against the sharing, like, I mean, you think back to the Renaissance and Michelangelo and he had all of these amazing apprentices working for him and um, he shared a lot of what he did because, you know, he wasn't afraid of who he was. He needed the help too. I mean, come on, let's face it. It's not easy to sculpt uh, figures out of marble, but I mean, he didn't hesitate to share what he did and how he learned it. Same with Leonardo and with uh, Rembrandt. I took art history, fine art history in university and I really, really learned a lot and I loved it. And it's not about confidence or how well you know something. It's about being comfortable as to who you are as a person and not being afraid to share. I mean, I'm sharing this with you right now, but are you going to be able to actually replicate this exact design? No, you'll do something else. You'll create your own masterpiece. But you have the basis of knowing what I do to go out and create something beautiful too. So I will try to upload this later on my YouTube channel. I'll get my son to help me. He has an account on YouTube. He's an amazing makeup artist. Um, amazing. But uh, I'm new to this YouTube game. So he will hopefully help me. And uh, I can get this out there to you guys. And just to let you know, I have a mini giveaway on my Instagram account right now where you can win. I don't know, I just want 800 subscribers. I'm not greedy. Maybe one day I'll have 800,000. But right now, um, I have a giveaway that if I reach, or when I reach 800 subscribers, or followers rather, um, I'm going to give away um, one of those minis I showed you earlier with a, a wooden easel. They're so cute. It's on my page. I mean, you can either gift that to someone or you can keep it for yourself. It's fun. They are so cute. It's just like a little mini piece of art to have around your home. And to put somewhere that it makes you smile. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to look at this, but I'm trying to be cognizant and aware that there's a camera here. So I have to film it in such a way that you guys can see. That looks okay. I don't know. I'm my own worst critic. I don't know how many of you out there. I don't know. There's so many pieces of art that haven't seen the light of day or I've scraped or I've scrapped. I remember when I worked with glass, the same thing. If, if it didn't, if it wasn't perfect, it didn't make it. It went into the water bin. And uh, there's times where my husband managed to um, dig some out before I was able to trash them but if I showed you the amount of stuff that doesn't see the light of day my family sometimes looks at me the, the if I'm crazy but I don't know I have to like it but like I said beauty I think is in the eyes of the beholder sometimes we criticize and we look at our own work and we hate it but for someone else out there it's beautiful right so I think I have to learn to take a leap of faith more okay peanut just give me a second that's my dog trying to get out of here but I want to wrap this video up for you guys and then you can see anyhow not too bad like I said working on the rounds is a little easier because it's easy to manipulate and um but you do get the cells, you get that lightning bolt, you get a little bit of everything. You get the gorgeous rich colors. 
and this will dry. Maybe I can post another video in the future of myself using um, just the water and the Amsterdam White as a cell activator. If you guys are interested in seeing that, comment down below and I can make another video um, rather than you just use the Australian Floetrol. I'm very happy to do that. Okay, I'm just going to do a nice little close-up. Not bad. Who knows, maybe once I reach a thousand, I'll get one of these guys away. And, uh, yeah, I think I hope you guys enjoyed this video. By all means, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Molten Girl Studios. I'll link that below. I'll link my friends' accounts down below as well. They're super talented, and um, there's a bubble, sorry. I've learned so much from people that I like to give back. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed that. Again, I will show you the dried piece. There's another bubble. I just poured these paints, that's why you see, a, um, normally you should let them sit for about a day, but I was impatient to get this video out to you guys, so filmed it, hope you like it, let me see if I can give you one more close up without screwing it up, there you guys go, okay, happy painting, go create something beautiful, share it with me, tag me, I don't know, enjoy. I hope this helps somebody and I love you all. Thank you so much.